Now, with the addition of PBR to uh, Prepare 3D 4.4, I just wanted to do a quick primer to kind of help the uh, other third-party uh, artists out there to uh, be able to utilize this wonderful shader, honestly. And uh, so this is basically it. Now, one of the cool things about this new shader is you actually can get a little bit of a preview of it within 3D Studios Max. So it's a great way of letting me demonstrate PBR. And for those who don't know, PBR stands for physics-based uh, rendering or physics-based reflections, one or the other. But uh, the key difference between PBR and the previous uh, of environment mapping or specular uh, type of rendering is in the reflections and this is a great demonstration that I have set up here to show you the key differences in those reflections and if you look at this first sphere this is basically what we had to you work with in the original FSX slash P3D shader in that we have this clean crisp reflection this blue, the, this white specular here, which represents the sun, and that's all we had. We could change the bloom of that specular hit right there. We can change the level of reflection, but we couldn't change the the diffuse of the reflection, how blurry the reflection got. And that's what really defines the power of reflection is how blurry it gets and how dull it gets and that is defined by the smoothness of the surface. Now what PBR allows you to do is define the smoothness of the surface and if we scroll over here to the right you can see that blur that reflection which is this basic trees grass reflection is actually getting blurrier and duller as we move on and same thing for the specular highlight here is actually blooming out until we have a matte object over here. Now that is one of the key differences of PBR is that ability to blur out what is in the reflection to try to simulate what happens in real life when an object gets more and more dull or less and less shiny. Now the second portion of PBR that really really is kind of affect the third party uh, models and aircraft is the metalness channel which is a second channel that we can tweak with. Now the metalness is usually off and on and I'll demonstrate why this is. Is that here you can see the same sphere, same color, but this time it has a gradient over it of the metalness along with the uh, the uh, uh, along with the smoothness so right here we have 100% uh, metal and then 100% not metal and you can see in the graduation of it going from uh, not metal to metal there isn't much difference until it gets to 100% now let's look in here at what metal does First and foremost, that specular is now shaded with the color of the albedo channel or the diffuse channel. You can see the uh, texture is blue, so the specular highlight is going to be tinted blue. Same thing for the reflection. If you look over here, you can see a little bit of the green in the reflection, but in here, it's more of the blue is coming through the reflection. So the metalness is allowing the reflection to be tinted by the albedo channel. I hope you can uh, follow that. Now if you, we come over here to the 100% metalness, this is where you're going to get your anodized aluminums out of, or uh, something like your, your copper, your brasses. So we have this you know, shaded 100%, this is a polished metal here. And then let's start cranking up the uh, the roughness or you know uh, lowering this uh, smoothness channel and you can see right here we're starting to get into the anodized the dull anodized aluminum here and then really really dull here so this is in a nutshell what PBR is going to bring to P3D 4.4 and above and let's go ahead and take a quick look at how we get that First and foremost, as a you're going to need the access to the max file because it's a shader that you have to select. 
if we go in here, you can see right here, this is called prepared 3, uh, prepare 3D PBR. And if we come in here to the standard shader, and you can see this is the standard uh, FSX P3D shader that we typically select, but here's the PBR one. I'll show you the difference between the two. So right now, there's not a lot of depth between in the shader and that you know what we can work with it's pretty short list versus the uh, the older one that had a really long list of tweaks and, and different settings so hopefully they give us a little bit more power to work with within the shader but right now what we have is definitely workable so first and foremost we'll have this albedo this is basically changing the tinting generally uh, you want to keep this white if you go into the darker you can see it just kind of tints everything dark uh, this metallic and smoothness I have no idea what it does I mean it says it just adjusts as metallic and smoothness but I haven't seen any difference in the game uh, here is your albedo right here you can see this is my image right here and this is really interesting in that the shader actually when you load up the DDS the um, the the compressed format it actually flips the UV channel so it's basically how it's going to be seen in the game now if you load up a targa it's not going to be flipped it's really interesting how they did that because one of the annoying features with FSX P3D uh, development is you have to flip Whenever you convert from Targa to DDS, uh, you have to flip the image. And this actually already knows that. So that's great to work with. And here is the all important metallic. This is going to be replacing your specular channel. And it's it doesn't look like much when you view it from here. It, you, look at this and you just like okay well what is this I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and you know uh, after this break out the different channels and how to use them but this is your uh, metallic uh, slot I usually call that as a dot M for metallic and I'll do it like underscore a for albedo underscore M for metallic then you have a normal emissive and detail and then we have uh, this is an important one right here. Metallic map has occlusion. Now uh, I'll go ahead and get into what that is, but that's a, definitely a new feature in the PBR is having an occlusion layer in your texture, which is really important. And, and some other general controls in here, but uh, these are the main important features right here. So let's go ahead and look at the texture itself. So let me move over my Photoshop right there. And the albedo channel is just like your standard diffuse channel, your dis diffuse map in your FSX. It's probably, you could actually use the same. Uh, the channels are RGB and the alpha will control the opacity. And uh, that is controlled inside here, right here, uh, oh, right here opaque mask and translucent so if you have like clear glass you set this to translucent and it'll use the alpha channel to uh, uh, decide what is translucent and what's not let's go back in here and then here you can see all the spheres are going to be texture mapped to this blue area and the the uh, the text is just over here and then let's go into the all important metallic map now this is RGB plus an alpha has to be RGB plus an alpha the red is going to control here the red is controlling the uh, metalness so white is metal black is not metal and here's that gradient that I showed you that really didn't do much in the scene you know the gradient is right across these spheres and it really doesn't do much but the difference between white and black is very, very big. So, and then green 
here, the green channel is going to be your ambient occlusion channel. Now, what ambient occlusion does is the dark areas are not going to be darker, but also cut down on the reflection. So if you have like a wheel well that has a whole bunch of ambient occlusion, it's going to cut down drastically on the reflections. So you won't have this, you know, just kind of mesmerizing reflections in a dark wheel well. And that's what is really important. So um, be sure to use uh, this ambient occlusion channel. I'll just do a quick demonstration here. This should be about where those spheres are. Let's save it. And you can see right here, and the, the shaded part, it's darker and it also eliminates the reflection. So that's going to be for your dark areas, your uh, crevices, uh, your you know secluded areas, dirty areas. That's going to be your uh, cold uh, textures. And that's just a black and white map. Or not, it's not a black and white, it's a grayscale map. So let's go ahead and undo that. Uh, blue channel is not used. The alpha channel is your uh, uh, your smoothness. The white is smooth. The black is matte or uh, rough. Uh, so you can see I have this gradient from black to white, and all the spheres on the left hand side are going to be as smooth as possible. The spheres on the right hand side is going to be as rough as possible. And yeah, just to give you a quick, let's see, let's do this. I should hit one of those spheres. Yep, right there. And you can see how fast it is updating the scene once you save the uh, the image. And that is a really cool feature. So overall, what we're dealing with PBR is how it handles reflections whether it's uh, metallic or not, whether it's smooth or not, and also the occlusion will uh, handle the reflections of whether it's reflective or whether it's not. So with those three elements, you can get some really amazing stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, something that I've been working on. Now this is not done. This is still pretty much, very much in alpha. I just got it into the shaders. The uh, animation system still isn't quite working yet. I still have to figure some things out, but this will give you a good idea for what the, some of the things you can do if you really push it. Now, I have to tone down some of these normal maps, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at these metals. Now, look at this. Watch when I start rotating in slow mode. Now that looks like metal. And if you can look over here, this is plastic. So it's got uh, black on that metal channel, but it's still very glossy. And it's handling the reflections a bit differently. And these things look and react and feel like metal. Very nice. I'm happy with how that came out. Now let's take a look at something else like these right here since uh, uh, since the albedo channel has yellow it's uh, and this is a metallic cylinder and uh, the metallic channel is set for white it's going to tint the uh, reflections and the specular that yellow so it kind of has this uh, anodized look to it and you can see that these uh, rudder pedals where some of the paint has worn off and shown bare metal versus the painted. You can see right here the, the difference in materials and how it reacts to the reflection right there. So you, now you have these two surfaces. You have a painted surface and a metallic surface right next to each other having a total different look to it. And this is all one texture, this is all one material, it's not a, a metal material and it's not a you know non-metal -material, material, it's a single PBR texture that does this entire thing. 
can see, and you can, you know, you have a little bit of a fabric here showing off the normal maps. Now, this is one of the things I really like is watch when I watch how the interior volume just kind of reacts with the light as I rotate around. I just love the way it, everything reacts to the light. Same thing for the wings. Now PBR doesn't change what is in the reflection. What is in re the reflection is still defined by uh, P3D as being that the the really old glass, you know, blue sky up above, grass below, trees around. That's always going to be a reflection. I don't know how to change the reflection cube. I didn't see that in the uh, options. It's something you can do in the old shaders, change the reflection cube, but it's not something I did see. You can even see down here Yeah, we've got this plastic tubing and this metal nut with threads on it and this metal cable and it all reacts to the reflections and the lighting differently. Well, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at PBR. Well, 16 minutes is a not-so-quick look. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and hopefully it was educational. I can't wait to see what some of the other third parties or some of the, you know, the, uh, the fan base, you know, third, you know, party add-ons do with this technology. I think it's really kind of revolutionized some of the visuals that we have in here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do with it. Anyways, take care.